America, the land of the free, home of the brave, and the stupid, look forward, and the criminally insane. It's the new meds. <laughs> the United States has seen its fair share of gangbangers, mobsters, and psychotics who have roamed our beloved streets causing untold chaos, destruction, and corruption. Tonight on A Criminal History, A Grand Theft Auto Biography. Welcome back everyone. Although forced to record the audio for these episodes now from my padded prison cell in upstate Liberty, through my own tenacious means, and with the help of my good friend, the criminal historian, who is now handling all post-production, and she's now taking all of my money as well, <clears throat> I am finally back to tell you one of the most unbelievable stories about the most notorious heist planner in the history of this great nation. We will follow a man who may have been physically disabled, but never allowed that obstacle to prevent him from making a substantial mark on the history of crime in America. In fact, he may be one of the most successful criminals this nation has ever seen, with the exception of yours truly, only he has yet to be arrested, lucky son of a- <clears throat> But we will get a glimpse tonight at the man responsible for planning such infamous scores as the legendary robbery of the Union Depository and the Diamond Casino heist half a decade later, as well as countless other crimes before, after, and in between these most well-known incidents. We will see theft, betrayal, and even love as we document for you a criminal history of Lester Crest. Lester Crest was born with a wasting disease, most likely athetoid cerebral palsy, which often occurs during the birthing process and resulted in his muscle strength being dramatically reduced to the point of often needing to use a wheelchair to move around, though suspiciously, as he got older, he seemed to either slowly overcome the worst of his mobility issues through physical therapies or simply become accustomed to the pain and capable of tolerating it for long enough to travel short distances on foot without one. His childhood is almost completely obscured in all public and even private records, possibly intentionally so, and by Mr. Crest's own doing, since one thing we do know about his childhood is that very early on he developed quite a knack to hack. It's unclear when exactly he became adept at things like network infiltration and a general competence with technology but given his limited mobility right from birth, it seems logical to assume that this interest came about at a very young age. It's also not clear when or where Lester attended regular school, or where he grew up at all for that matter, although given some of his earliest associations, it once again seems a logical assumption that he was born and raised either somewhere in the Midwestern United States, perhaps even Liberty State, or more likely in San Andreas State. The latter is perhaps more likely given his familiarity with the Los Santos Superbank, the Union Depository, a score he would go on to mythologize to his earliest heist crew, as well as the fact that one of the earliest known legitimate career paths Mr. Crest attempted was in education, applying for a professorship at the University of San Andreas Los Santos. His application was denied, however, and in retaliation to the school, he would hack their staff server and leave a backdoor to their systems, quote, so wide a drunken freshman could stumble through it, demonstrating that his pettiness and issues with authority go back quite far. At some point in his mid-twenties, Lester moved out to the Midwest and eventually met and became closely associated with future infamous bank robbers Michael Townley and Trevor Phillips. 
the three men, along with numerous other, often short-term criminals, would form a heist crew that became famous across that region of the country for pulling off numerous robberies of banks, jewelry stores, and other similar outlets. Lester's role in the crew would be planner and data analyst, often finding the scores the men would attempt and setting up each step of their robberies with meticulous attention to detail. It was almost certainly because of Lester's incredible skills at considering all contingencies that the crew would manage to have as much success as they did for as long as they did. The three men would also slowly develop a loose and uneasy friendship, though Lester and Trevor never seemed to actually like each other, but they would all trust each other enough for Lester to share with them his ultimate dream job of robbing the Los Santos Union Depository Building, a job the three of them collectively referred to as the big one. The big one. The, the big, big one. one! What is the big one? Their collaboration would continue for many years until Michael met a woman named Amanda and started a family, which changed his priorities and eventually resulted in him concocting an elaborate plan to fake his own death and escape the life, in order to start fresh somewhere else, far away from Trevor and by extension Lester. This plan, taking place in the winter of 2004, involved robbing a cash storage facility in Ludendorff, North Yankton, but Lester would actively refuse to participate in the heist being highly suspicious of the details provided by Michael, and just generally wary of both Trevor and Brad Snyder, their newest recruit to the team. Lester's suspicions would be proven correct when the heist ended in Michael and Brad's apparent death, and Trevor Phillips apparently going on the run for the next nine years. Almost immediately following the failed robbery, which disbanded his original crew, Lester would move to Los Santos, which is, again, further reason to believe it's actually where he was raised. But he would also keep tabs on both Trevor and Michael when he learned the truth about Townley's elaborate plan to escape. Seeing as Michael had never disclosed any information about Lester to his contacts in the FIB, Lester would return the favor and keep Michael's secret, despite living within driving distance of each other. He would also continue to monitor Trevor Phillips, who ironically also moved to San Andreas following the Cash Depot job. But with Trevor, it would be more out of fear and perhaps morbid curiosity than any sense of loyalty or friendship to the madman. Lester would settle down in San Andreas, ostensibly anyways, and purchase a small, unassuming house on Amarillo Vista in Alboro Heights. He would also purchase a garment factory in La Mesa, Darnell Brothers, and begin running a textile business during his day-to-day. -day. In reality, though, he would continue to work with and for all manner of criminals across the state and across the country, and even begin actively operating a bounty hunting side business, paying for various targets across mostly Los Santos to be removed, and likely keeping tabs on almost every noteworthy criminal in this state, including yours truly. That's right, this is where I come in. For those of you who don't know, my name is Guinness Walker, and up until very recently, I was among the most successful criminal entrepreneurs in the history of the state, and one of the very first connections I made was with Mr. Lester Crest back in 2013. I was wondering when you show up. Welcome to paradise. <laughs> if your idea of paradise is a place where a sick, creepy voyeur can spy on anyone in the country with total impunity. <laughs> Actually, I guess that kind of is the American dream, huh? Hmm. Anyhow, uh, I digress. You have made a big name for yourself, and that name is Dangerous Idiot who's just waiting to get robbed. So do yourself a favor and put some of that uh, not-so-hard-earned money into real estate, and you can be a real player, just like me. <laughs> uh. Jesus, as I say that, I realize how depressing and pathetic I've become. I'm a, a mess, you know, uh, take pity on me. <laughs> End it now, kill me, ah! <laughs> and I thought it was funny. Okay, well, like I said, put some of that money into property. It's already people who want to rob you, and soon enough, there will be people who want to kill you. And if anybody gets particularly fresh, just give me a shout. I can put a bounty on them, and every whack job in the state will want to get them off your back for you. Of course, you never know. Maybe someone asked me to do it to you.
Oh, that was awkward. I'm going to be honest, though. I also strongly suspect that Mr. Crest had something to do with my arrest, given that no other person on planet Earth had more knowledge of my extensive criminal operations, but I can only ever speculate, especially since they don't provide me with internet here in my cell. In fact, it was Mr. Crest who managed to help me smuggle in a high-quality microphone and digital audio workstation attached to this crappy 2007 laptop. And I can only assume that he continues to work with the criminal historian who now actively runs this channel. I would just like to say, since they are definitely both listening to this, if you were responsible, one day I swear to God I will get out of here and you are both so dead. apologize for the inconvenience, but Mr. Guinness Walker is no longer available. I am your new host, the Criminal Historian. Let's continue on with the episode, shall we? Lester and Guinness worked together during 2013 on many different jobs, mostly targeting Meriwether security, including stealing a Titan cargo plane, two buzzard attack choppers, a secretly developed electromagnetic weapon, and a container full of weapons from them. It's entirely unclear what any of these things were actually used for, but it seems likely that Lester either sold them or held them in a secure location to be used by other criminal contacts for undisclosed projects, of which Lester certainly had many. But most of their work together in those early months had been conducted entirely through wireless communication, mostly encrypted text messages. By mid-2013, however, Lester had begun working with the likes of Paige Harris, another talented hacker, and recruited Guinness for their first big job together, the robbery of a safety deposit box at the Chumash branch of Fleesa Bank in Los Santos County. <laughs> Nothing like a bourgeois bank robber to remind me of how strange Los Santos has become. In my day, the psychos at least had the dignity to be psychotic. Nowadays, it's all about... Uh home furnishings and going straight. All right, you ready? Because this is it. Well, it's, it's not it, but uh, it's something, it's something uh, very big. And it's not quite ready yet, but I wanted to uh, see how you're doing. What I've got is a Fleesa Bank franchise. And it's nothing too complicated. There's no buy-in. Normally, there would be a buy-in. You would put in money up front, we would arrange the job, and you would pull it off. But this time, I'll, uh, cover the upfront costs. Call it the uh, price of getting a look at you. And there's no risk to you. Unless, of course, you count uh, getting locked up or shot. <laughs> so, you ready? What do you think? You uh, questions, comments, concerns? All right, what are you waiting for? Let's go see this place. Show it to me. Ooh, yes, it is the holiday season at the Crest Residence, and Daddy's out drinking. <laughs> Say, you passed. And if that thing I talked about comes up, I'll call you in. In the meantime, if anyone comes to me, I'll mention you as a reliable pair of hands. Hey, for the first time, that wasn't bad, but don't get clingy. While not actively involved, after the Fleece of Job, he would also continue to take a finder's fee for three more heists that Guinness conducted with his crew, connecting him to various other criminals, such as Agent 14 of the International Affairs Agency, and even Trevor Phillips, his old partner, though completely unbeknownst to the psychopath. He was, however, actively involved in planning an enormous robbery of the Pacific Standard Bank on Vinewood Boulevard, along with Guinness's crew. <laughs> well, you all look good, hmm? How do I look? Do I look like a, like a model? <laughs> like I work at Pekka Woods? <laughs> like a regular dreamboat? <laughs> well, whatever. We all love banks, hmm? 
Especially the, the big ones that take big risks, because they just know that if they went under, we'd all be dead. Too big to fail? Hmm? Great idea. Let's put it to the test. Hmm? Well, this is a little something I came up with. I, uh, <laughs> I like to call it bank robbing with a social agenda, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> it's something I, I tell myself so I can get some sleep at night. Anyway, <clears throat> those overly leveraged turds at Pacific Standard Bank, they are going to be hit at their flagship branch. How are we going to do that? Well, it's a little complicated, but there are some trucks that I need you to photograph. One of those trucks has a built-in transponder, and we need our transponder to blip out a don't explode signal to the die packs when we take them out of range of the Pacific Standard signal. Get it? All right, so don't worry about it. Just photograph the trucks, and I'll tell you which one to hit. And once we've done that, we'll need to have the transponder programmed to Pacific Standard's frequency. Now, my uh, signals expert, Avi Schwartzman, he's a... <laughs> He's uh, been on the run for years, you know, avoiding people, uh, hold up somewhere in the middle of nowhere, near North Chumash, you know. You go up there, you make nice, and you bring the device back, and then I will brief you on the rest. What do you say? Oh. Not very much, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, are you ready? This should be a... Uh, Pretty easy. Yeah, I've kept it simple since you all seem uh, pretty simple. In a good way. In a, in a good way. In a good uh, straight ahead, uh, low IQ kind of. Oh, no, let's do no, let's do, Stop it. Stop it. It's the new meds. <laughs> okay, armed robbery. Here we go. He would source a van fitted with a transponder and hire Avi Schwartzman, a signals expert to reprogram the transponder to disable the Pacific Standard die packs. He would also hire Paige Harris for that job once again to assist in borrowing a hacking rig from another high-end heist crew based in Vinewood, source thermal charges for entering the bank by planning an attack on a Meriwether security convoy, and source several getaway bikes for the escape from the San Andreas division of the Lost Motorcycle Club based out of Blaine County. much, but you, you, oh, you, you know, I thought you were just a bunch of, uh, creepy and quiet weirdos. Turns out, you're a bunch of creepy, quiet weirdos with talent. You, you rob and you steal and destroy like, like geniuses. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Here, let me, uh, wire you your money. You know, I will never forget the good times. You know, all the, the laughs we had. You know, you're like family. The picnic, the picnic, you know, and the hike in the woods, and, and all the selfies, and <laughs> oh, and the time we went rollerblading, and we, we watched the, the sunset, and we, we stayed up all night talking and sharing our innermost fears, and, and then, what was that? That wasn't you? Even the, the skinny dipping and the... Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> I, uh... The drugs. Oh, man, the drugs. I'm a... I am a heavily medicated man. I, uh... I'm not well at all. I, uh... I'm a little embarrassed. Um... Okay, the money. Here. And... Here. And... Here, and... Here, okay, you better take off and uh, take care, okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Also in 2013, 
Lester actively helped Guinness to run his motorcycle club, the Del Perro Mods, as he dabbled in the sale of various illicit substances across the state. He never actively admitted to this though, instead using a voice changer and posing as a man named Long John Teabag for several years, but only in the context of any work related to that business. It's entirely unclear why he did this, but I can only assume it was related to keeping his name and digital fingerprint as far away from Guinness's illegal businesses as possible. By August of 2013, Lester would be contacted by his old, supposedly dead friend, Michael Townley, now going by the name Michael DeSanta. Michael had recently run afoul of one of the state's most dangerous underworld bosses, one Martin Madrazo, and knowing no other way to make a lot of money very quickly, would reach out to Lester in hopes of rekindling their old partnership. Fuck you, Lester. You gonna let me in or what? Give me a minute! I was wondering when you'd show up. I was dead. Praise be. Guess you weren't very dead. You need my help. How do you know? Because you came here. Why else would you? <clears throat> I haven't been a good friend for you, Lester. I know that. Then you're going to make it up to me by doing whatever I ask. Or rather, I, I mean, I need something done. You need to know something, so why not help each other? I gotta make some dough. So you're back in the game? I guess. Look, Lester, about what happened before. Oh, I know you never mentioned my name. I know I'm not on any lists anywhere. I know you never betrayed me. As for you, you gotta figure that I never told anyone. That instead of gently decomposing in North Yankton, you're angrily decomposing in Los Santos with a shrink and a wife who don't love you no more. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> since you put it like that... Hey, shut up a minute. I'm getting an eye find alert. That little college boy sack of shit, phony fuck. Who? Jay Norris? Yes. That fuck is a lying bastard. I've read his fucking emails. He's a fucking cheat. I heard him say that he saved America. What, by, by outsourcing all the jobs? By selling us little bits of plastic restricted access shit? Well, now it's payback time, you lying turd. What the hell are you talking about? You are about to get that white-collar gig that you always dreamed of, Mikey. Here, take this uh, fashionably retro weird for a 45-year-old man, but I cannot let go of the 1980s bag, and dress yourself up like a billionaire math genius with low-level Asperger's. You better be ready for the minor glitch of your repulsive pseudo-messianic life. Okay, Lester. Get out of here! Call me when you're ready. We are about to put the Darwinism back in social Darwinism. And brother, it is going to be fun. You fucking kidding me? I'm a bank robber, not a web designer. So we'll go robbing soon. I'll find something. Just like the old days. <laughs> Lester would agree to help Michael, but in exchange he would also demand Michael's help to assassinate the founder and then CEO of Life Invader. Jay Norris, by having Michael swap out Norris's prototype iFruit phone with one that Lester rigged with explosives. Having personal moral objections to Norris's use of child labor and being annoyed by his messiah complex, though it mustn't be forgotten that following Norris's death, Lester also made an enormous profit buying Life Invader shares at a minimum, which he later sold at enormously inflated rates. So what do you think? Oh, um, let's see, either we hit a bank in the sticks or we do a store. Which do you like? Well, <clears throat> store's usually easier, but I gotta make a big take. Oh, well, gems it is then. Let's go to Vangelico, buy ourselves an engagement ring. Oh, we're gonna need a crew. I can round up some of the old guys. There are no old guys. Moses, uh, ironically, he found Jesus. Uh, all those Irish crazies, they mostly just disappeared. That crew from the south, they all went down. There was, a. Uh, an Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but yeah, he went quiet. All right. Well, we're gonna need a crew. 
You got any contacts in LS or not? I've been working with someone, but they're too unpredictable. I'll have to reach out to some other guys. Now, we all know why we're here. We've got a store to take. The plan is simple, elegant. Listen to Lester, pay attention to the information he gives you, and we'll all make a buck. If things go bad, you know the drill. This wasn't organized. We don't know each other. We got caught up in a robbery and acted in self-defense. But it's not going to be an issue because everything's going to go just fine. The, um, the uh, alarm system is easy. Now, if I didn't need to be running things, I could have it offline myself. No problem, but uh, you should be able to get us a pretty decent window. How decent depends on the job you do. Now, uh, once it's down, you signal Michael. He makes the call. Things look good. We should be able to drop a present right through the air vent on the roof. Everybody goes to sleep. No problem. We take our time. If we run into trouble, we move quickly and with force. Any questions? No? Let's go. All right, people. We need to split up. They're going to be looking for a crew. I'll wire your cuts when the rocks have been sold. That shit was crazy, dog. So what now? We get out of here. Keep our heads down. Hey, you did good, kid. What'd I tell you, Lester, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, look, everybody take off. Hey, Franklin. Listen, Lester and I got some things we gotta clean up. I want you to stop by the house a little later on. We'll celebrate, all right? All right. Okay. <laughs> huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. We're back in action. With the success of the Evangelico job, Lester would be sufficiently convinced of Franklin's competence, as he was initially quite skeptical of the newbie, to begin hiring Clinton to perform several high-profile assassinations of mostly CEOs in and around the state of San Andreas, in order to profit off of the stock market, just as he'd done with the murder of Jay Norris. So what's up, man? Sit down and face forward. Now, I don't have a lot of time. I know you need money. Did Michael tell you about Life Invader? Oh, shit. Y'all two did that? Look forward. We're two strangers having a friendly chat. And don't pretend that you liked Jane Norris. Oh, man, I don't know, homie. I mean, yeah, the dude I source worked to child slaves. Then stole and sold everybody's private information. And even ripped his own friend's ideas off and walked around like the Messiah while doing it, but... Man, I don't think the nigga deserved to have his fucking head blowed off on TV. Oh, well, aren't you just a moral majority? You know, that's why the world is the way it is today, when a paid thug gets all namby-pamby when someone asks him to act like a paid thug and for a good cause. Man, check this out, homie. I like blowing motherfucking fools' heads off just as much as the next psychotic asshole. But I just don't look at the shit as doing a good deed. Well, now you can, because it's not fools' heads, it's assholes' heads. And not just heads, you know, trashing cars or planning lies, forging evidence, anything we can do to take the battle back to these turds. You know, we'll fix the market in our favor and we'll right a few wrongs while we're at it. <laughs> Shit, okay, cool. Right, so, you heard of Mollus? Hell yeah. Okay, so there's a new Mollus, sort of a super Mollus, and it's called Priapolds. It's giving the living rigor mortis. Only Brett Lowry, CEO of Bilkington Research, paid off the FDA. Now, he doesn't care that his hardness pills are giving desperate middle-aged men the world over heart attacks. Damn, man, that sucks. Yeah, it does. Now, Mr. Greedy Lowry is staying at the Von Krastenberg Hotel in Richmond. Of course, he'll be well protected, but if he goes away, then America goes back to using Mollus, and Beta Pharmaceuticals gets a big bump in the price of their stock. Damn, man, all right, fuck it, I got you. I thought that you would. Now... Consider using a sniper rifle or sticky bombs. You know, whatever. Do it your way, however you want. I'm gonna make the investment. We don't speak about this or anything. Now walk away, and I'll stay here till you're gone. He would seemingly always have a moral reasoning behind these assassinations, but clearly no moral objection to the obscene amounts of money both he and Mr. Clinton made by manipulating the market. He would have Clinton target Brett Lowry, CEO of Bilkington Research for producing a heart-stopping version of the drug Priapol, four supposedly paid-off jurors in a class-action lawsuit against Redwood Cigarettes. Okay, you know Redwood Cigarettes? Sure, the cigarette that built America. 
They've rigged a jury to throw a class action lawsuit that would cover the treatment costs of thousands of emphysema sufferers. And there are four corrupt jurors on Redwood's books. I'll send you the details. Oh, and we only have a few hours to make them disappear. The court case is tomorrow morning. Is that all, dog? Shit, that's quite a favor. And that's quite a house you're living in. Get this done quickly, and I'll try to throw in a sweetener as well. The CEO of Facade, Jackson Skinner. Ever heard of Jackson Skinner? He's head of product development at Facade. Man, we must read different magazines. And the bastard made a fortune selling customer data to the highest bidder from Moscow to Tehran. He's handing it to the cyber terrorists on a fucking silver platter. Okay, dog, chill. Shit, chill. I got you, man. What's the play? I'm reliably informed that he has a weakness for working girls. There's a regular he likes to pick up in La Puerta. You stake her out, and she should lead you to Skinner. I'll send you the location. Meanwhile, maybe I'll take another look at the fruit share price. <laughs> All right, homie, I'll be in touch. A billionaire investor, Isaac Penny, who planned to buy a controlling interest in the Vapid Motor Company. So who the fuck don't you like today? Guys called Isaac Penny, ruthless vulture capitalist, about to take a controlling interest in Vapid Motor Company and sell thousands of workers down the river. Penny's uh, one of those tight-fisted billionaires, rides the same bus to and from work every day. I was thinking you could take over the route and... Drop the ass off where he needs to go. I got it. Good. Oh, one thing. If I was you, I wouldn't buy any vapid stock until the acquisition falls through. And finally, Enzo Benelli, an ex-Mafia real estate developer. It's me, dog. Where we at? We're at Enzo Benelli. Mafia guy turned real estate developer. He's bullied his way onto half the building contracts in Los Santos. Extortion, murder, labor racketeering, you name it. There's not a construction worker in town earning a livable wage right now, and Gold Coast Development is about to go under. <laughs> And let me guess, you got a personal interest in Gold Coast, right? <laughs> Anyone think you'd done this before? Uh, according to Benelli's cell phone, he's at the construction site downtown. It's done. One small problem. My source squealed. Benelli's expecting a hit. Watch yourself and go equipped. You'll have a lot of muscle. Though estimates vary wildly, some have suggested that between the two men, they could have made as much as two trillion dollars. Though, Given what both would go on to do, it seems unlikely that this number is anything more than headline-grabbing exaggeration. But they certainly did make a lot of money, of that there can be little doubt. This video, and all videos on my channel, are brought to you in large part by the wonderful support of my patrons on Patreon.com. An extra special thank you to my executive producer and Walkerville tier patrons, Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Chuck K45, King GTA 15, Diecastinator, and Michael Vandenberg. Patrons at these tiers also have the option to promote a little bit of their own content, so this video is also brought to you in part by Ezra's Let's Play channel, Scott Games 99. Mason Collins' podcast channel, We're About Everything, Chuck K45's Upstart Farming channel, and Diecastinator's channel, All About Diecast Cars. I release all videos a little early for patrons and completely uncensored, and give you access to any of the original music tracks created for a given video. You'll also get to see your name in the credits of all videos produced while you're pledged, get access to a small patron-only Discord where you can easily speak with me or see little behind-the-scenes snippets. And you'll also receive my eternal gratitude. Seriously, especially these days, those of you who support my work directly are absolutely incredible, and I can't properly express how grateful I am to all of you. Patreon.com forward slash The Criminal Historian. Thank you so much for watching. Lester would continue to help both Michael DeSanta and, to an extent, Trevor Phillips throughout late 2013. Shortly after Trevor's return to Los Santos, Mr. Phillips would successfully pull off a heist on Meriwether Security, which, while probably something Lester would have approved of under normal circumstances, was actually a job that Lester was highly skeptical of, and similarly to the Cash Depot job in Ludendorff, 
he attempted to warn them of the dangers to no avail. Upon successfully retrieving a super weapon from the private security company, Lester would amazingly manage to convince Trevor to return it in order to avoid having all of their names placed on the nation's most wanted list, though Trevor's intimidating presence would compel Mr. Crest to personally assist Floyd Hebert in dumping the device back into the sea. You should be in bed. Yes, I should be. I would be if certain known associates weren't busy making themselves enemies of the state. Woo! You know, the FIB, Merriweather, IAA, you could fuck with them all day long. But when you try and steal an experimental super weapon and sell it to the Chinese, you and everyone you ever knew is going to be fucked in the ass, you fucking chumps. Ho hold on, man. A super weapon? The Chinese? What? What'd you think is in there? I thought he talked to you. All right, man, so what now? Well, maybe I can organize to have it taken back and found amongst the wreckage. Whoa! Holy fuck, Lester Crest! Holding on and looking good, huh? Do you have any idea what you did here? Yeah? I pulled a score. What, are you jealous because you didn't get your 20%? that thing doesn't go back, then we will all end up on every watch list in the entire planet. Watch list? So fucking watch! So they don't watch, they kill. Idiot, we'll all be dead within a week. Think! All right, listen. Take the truck, take a guy, do what you gotta do. Trevor? I'll load it up, uh, Trevor. Great. Then you and the patient can take it all back. Right fucking now! So you mean to tell me this shit was all for nothing? Michael DeSanta would continue to be involved with his shady contacts in the Federal Investigation Bureau, and Lester would assist in several jobs to ensure their success given the stakes involved. He planned a robbery on a county bank in Polito Bay, guarded by one of the state's most corrupt police divisions. Come on, man, knock it off. What? I'm gonna break your fucking fingers, you don't knock that shit off. Well, please, all right, you'd alleviate the boredom. Ah, finally. Hey. 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 Welcome to paradise. My car's this way. It's dry out here. Don't worry, brother. Mark will take care of all your moisturizing needs. Mm. Oh. Shall we? Might as well get started. Got to meet this alarm guy. Fucking shoot him. Not if I get to him first. Yeah. Stay back! We got hostages! Tell the sheriff the 211 is confirmed. We're gonna need everything we got down here. Move it! Call up the seat. You know you surround it, so you get to ride to the airport. I don't care if they surrender. I'm killing these bad guys. Now let the hostages go! Time to face the music! Ah! Sweet mother shit! Here we go! Right here! Get on! With Lester and Michael's partnership effectively back in full force, and even Trevor involved in their crew once again, despite Lester's reservations, they would also begin actually planning to carry out their legendary big one by conducting information ops, which Lester actively participated in. So what's going on here? What's going on is the big one. A long, long time ago in a faraway place, there were three guys. Michael, Trevor, and Lester. And Brad. Uh, yeah. Sure, Brad was there sometimes as well. I mean, there were other guys, though, too. So, uh, 
Anyway, we uh, robbed and lied and we hurt people. Pretty much lived a low-life kind of existence. But always dreaming of one thing and one thing only. The big one. The big one. The, the big, big one! one! What is the big one? <laughs> the Union Depository. Around 200 million in gold bricks, all taken from kindly Uncle Sam, who will spend the rest of our lives being hunted by government officials if we live through the attempt. But, but it'll be my, uh, our masterpiece. So, gentlemen, let's do our civic duty and get out there and find some gainful employment. This way. Let's go. Big one. However, Michael and Trevor's relationship would begin to deteriorate as the truth about Michael's betrayal came to light, eventually forcing Lester to help Franklin Clinton in locating Michael after he was kidnapped by the Wei Chang Triad due to a misunderstanding on their part involving Michael's relationship to Trevor. He would help Michael and Franklin execute a robbery on the FIB headquarters building in downtown Los Santos though for some odd reason, the details surrounding this heist remain entirely unclear even 10 plus years after the fact due to extensive black ink covering all files, perhaps in part placed there thanks to Lester's paranoia in ever being connected to the job. So I need to present myself as a proper textile magnet, so... So you stop making anything? Nothing looks more suspicious in America than someone who's actually prepared to make something. <laughs> Jesus. What about you? Oh, pocket, Trevor. We're having some problems. Brad. Yeah, what else? Yes, anyway, the Union Depository is on hold for now. Can't do it without him, especially now that he knows. Yeah, thank but... God you guys are here. You alone? Davey, where's your boyfriend, Steve? He's on his way up. Yeah, they're up here. Listen, this shit's about to hit the fan. Our entire lives together has been nothing but a series of fans and shits. Sort this problem out for me, and I will get Mr. Leisure Wear off your back. And if we don't? Then I will go to jail and you will get shot. Ah, fuck you, Dave. I've heard it all before. Not like this, you haven't. Has he briefed you? Oh, well, yes, he has. He told us that if we do what you say, then together we can take down the big bad wolf that is government <laughs> corruption. Yeah, and if you don't, we're all gonna fry, because the agency's onto us. I've even got some fools in our own bureau that are questioning my methods. <laughs> Think I'm a liar, <laughs> a cheater, some kind of a killer and a thief. So? So, there's some uh, evidence, and I need you guys to find out what they know. All right, so what? You want Lester here to hack into the system, wipe it all clean? Oh, no, no, that will not work. The only way to access it is through your buildings. Fuck me. <laughs> Michael, you'd be doing me a very big favor. And if you do this, I will make sure that all your files are deleted. I promise you. Hey! It's the last thing we do, and we're done. Period. Of course. I'm a man of my word. Dave, let's go! Damn, Franklin. Oh, Jesus. Ah. Any longer and I was gonna torch this place too. <laughs> hey, hey, you did it! We did it! Yeah! yeah. Fucking it! <laughs> hey, where's my liquor at, dog? Well, I got it. It's right here. Let's go, let's go. Come on. Here it is. Come here. Shit. There you go. Man, you may be a conflicting, hypocritical, self-loafing old bastard, dog, but there's no one else. I'd rather rob a federal building with me. Amen <laughs> to that. Thank you, boys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <sighs> so, you want another drink? I think I better stay at least a little bit sober. I gotta deal with Davy and Dickwad yet. Put things to bed. Man, you want me to roll with you, dog? No, no, I probably better do this alone. I mean, we did everything. We're all in this together, right? So as long as we all are not together, there's nothing they can really do to us. All right, see you, dog. Take care. Then it's Trevor and I'm out. Oh, we're gonna need Trevor. Maybe you should give him a call now. Oh, fuck that. After I take care of this shit. All right, all right, well, take care of yourself. Frankie! Lester! Lester needs a drink! Likely by mid to late October of that year, he would also have become good enough friends with Franklin Clinton to aid him in rescuing one of Franklin's old gangster friends, Lamar Davis, 
when Davis was kidnapped by members of the Balas gang on word of one of Franklin's supposed allies, Harold Stretch Joseph. This is particularly noteworthy since, unlike most other jobs Lester participated in, he was not compensated at all for his assistance, which means his involvement was entirely voluntary and predicated on helping a friend. Towards the end of October, though, Lester and Michael would finally return to planning their massive heist on the Union Depository, with even Lester insisting that such a job would only be successful with Trevor's assistance, despite his own issues with the man. Similarly to the FIB job, however, the details surrounding the UD raid remain to this day incredibly vague and mostly unknown due to several government agencies obscuring all actors directly involved for unknown reasons. Fuck you. Fuck you! All right, excuse all right, all right, me! Enough! Enough! enough. Thank you! <clears throat> okay, uh, this is it. Well, we have two options. They're both a little, uh, out there, but then again, what do you expect? Okay, option one. We hijack their armored cars. We take the crews hostage, and then we infiltrate the depository. Now, once you're in there and you've got the score, we send in a team of modded cars. You load up, you get out. We need to infiltrate the transportation grid and manipulate it to aid our escape. But option two, we cause a distraction out front, make them think we're dumb. <laughs> well, we've never had a problem convincing people of that, have we? <laughs> the other guys will be drilling, taking what they can. You're going to be the distraction. Always the attention seeker. You know, for a guy who's always stepping on his friends to get ahead, he has an unfortunately low sense of self-worth. Okay, okay, let me show you the board. Ready for action, huh? Let's go! All right, I'm gonna meet my guy at the bank. Gold ain't ours yet, but we are this close! Get the crew, let's go, let's go! What is known is that Michael, Trevor, Franklin, and Lester, along with a crew of several other low-profile criminals, would manage to pull off one of the most audacious robberies in the history of the state, and even perhaps the nation. And amazingly, it is also reported that Lester may have actively participated in this heist, possibly even using a rocket-propelled grenade launcher to shoot down several pursuing helicopters as the team escaped with the over $200 million worth of gold bullion. It's also suspected that Lester was directly involved in aiding Michael, Trevor, and Franklin in setting up both Steve Haynes' FIB team and a Merriweather security team in a pincer maneuver at Grand Bank's steel foundry in Cypress Flats, though only after being confronted by Franklin Clinton, who was reportedly approached by both Steve Haynes and billionaire investor Devin Weston, and asked to kill both Trevor and Michael respectively. Man, imagine a fucking scenario that will fuck things up the worst. Boy, my mind is just racing, but you know, I don't want to say something that's really exciting and then you have to act all deflated and say, no, no, it's just that somebody got the same tattoo I got, so why don't you just go ahead and tell me? Some motherfucker wants me to kill Michael. Some other motherfucker wants me to kill Trevor. I feel I can't kill both of them. Man, I'm fucked, man. I don't know what the fuck to do right now. Damn. Well, I can see that. Well, who are the motherfuckers? Oh, Steve Haynes, uh, this angry motherfucker from the FIB. Yeah. Um, Devin Weston, man, you know the... Um, oh, that angry, that, um, rich fucker from whatever holy hibernates in. Exactly. All right, all right. I say kill Michael, then kill Trevor. Oh. Man, are you for real? You're fucked, you know? I, I, I don't know. You know everything, dog. I know, okay, but I... I I'm sorry, I guess this is it. You know, I'm doing my best, man. I don't know how you can deal with both of them. I know, man. Shit. We're fucked. Every single one of us is fucked. Unless... Okay, Steve Haynes is under a lot of heat because of the shootings at Court Center. And Devin Weston is A, known to be a major asshole, and B, known to be friendly with Don Percival, who runs Merriweather. I think, actually, Weston owns a piece of Merriweather. 
Right, 11%. Pretty good for a pseudo-liberal owning a private army. So, they would both love to be involved in capturing the bullion that we just lifted. If I tell them both that you boys were at the foundry and where you had heights melting it down, then maybe, maybe both of them will pay you a visit and bam, we turn it into a, a bust. I ain't got no better ideas. All right, I'm gonna get in touch with Michael and Trevor. You go to the foundry, get yourself set up. I got you. All right. If Mr. Clinton is to be believed, Lester would initially advise Clinton to kill both men, first Trevor and then Michael. But after some deliberation between the two, instead helped to devise their final plan, which saw almost all of their collective enemies taken down in one fell swoop. Planning the assassinations of Steve Haynes, Wei Cheng, Harold Joseph, and Devin Weston, all in the space of several hours. <coughs> oh, looks like we did it. See it for now. Exactly, for now. So, what's next, huh? Are we just gonna wait around till someone else comes to kill us? Or are we gonna wait till this fucker gets turned again? Oh, bite me. Ain't anybody getting turned again, and you know it. Hey man, the way I see it, we only just begun to clean this shit up. We got a lot of old friends I think need to be re-educated. A lot of friends. I mean, things could get really messy. No, we just gotta silence a few noisy people. <laughs> Hell yeah, let me see. There's uh Steve Haynes. Dave Norton. No, we need him alive. Why? So nobody fucks with us afterwards. What about that tribe, motherfucker? The one that think you two boys is dating? Shit, you know he bound to come back. Yep, there's that. Well, who's the uh, the guy who set up Lamar? Hmm? Stretch, we want to throw him in? Shit, Trevor will throw anyone in just to satisfy his bloodlust. Whoa! Hey! <laughs> It's called a fucking loose end, all right? Now, if we're gonna be men of peace and tranquility, we tie up loose ends. Man, Stretch has been a liability. But then we're gonna have to take care of our old pals, Devin Weston and Steve Haynes. Oh, fuck, what a mess, man. Well, let's get it cleaned up. How about you get Lester on the line? Who is this? Uh, stop calling this number. Hey, it's me, dawg. <laughs> You're alive. I thought someone might have your phone. No, nah, no, nah, but look, I got you on speakerphone. Oh, did Mike make it? Yeah, I'm here. And the other one? <clears throat> See you putting the ground, Wheels! Uh-huh. You, um, just calling for a chat? No, we got some work to do. Can you get us some whereabouts? Oh, I'll do my best. Who? Steve Haynes, to start. And Devin Weston's ass. And, uh, Wei Ching! W-E-I-C-H-E-N-G! Wei Chang! Wei Chang! And Franklin's pal, Stretch! Huh. Stretch? Yeah, man, look, his real name is Harold Joseph. Okay, well, I can tell you that Agent Haynes is taping a show over on Del Perro Pier. Shooting permit came up immediately. Check it! Oh, I wanted to ice that fucker since the moment I met him. All right, all right. Ah, I got a signal from Mr. Harold Joseph's phone over at the B.J. Smith Recreation Center. No, I got him. I got him. Let's keep him clear of uh, known associates. All right, thanks, dawg. You got it. What you got for me? Tao Ching's credit card just bought a Magnum at the beach club in Pacific Bluffs. Okay, I'll go ask his ass about his punk-ass dad. When I find Mr. Weston, I'll send the coordinates. All right, good. Having pulled off one of the most lucrative robberies in the history of America, Lester would reportedly attempt to retire immediately following the death of Devin Weston. But like any good criminal, he wouldn't remain dormant for nearly as long as he apparently hoped to. Lester would indeed take a break from actively participating in any actual heists himself. He would, however, continue to work with the likes of Guinness Walker and other criminals across the state of San Andreas by providing intel support and services, such as bribing the San Andreas authorities to keep them off of whoever paid him, or locate vehicles for criminals just about anywhere in the state. He would also assist Guinness and likely many other active mercenaries in and around Los Santos in establishing a presence on the SecuroServe VIP network, though it's unclear what his involvement was exactly in these kinds of operations, or if he even took a finder's fee. However, in 2017, Guinness would purchase an expensive government facility somewhere in San Andreas, and Lester would agree to work with him once again to coordinate their work for one of America's most obnoxious tech billionaires 
Avon Hertz. Yes, yes, come in, come in, come in. Have a seat anywhere. This is the one room in the country where we cannot be recorded. Can I take this mask off now? Oh, yeah. Do you know Avon Hertz? Avon Hertz. Yes, the Avon Hertz. Don't act all weird. I'm just a normal genius. I do very normal things like kite surf with presidents and date B-list actresses. I bleed real tears. This is real hair. I program and I have actual emotions. I'm sort of like one of those things that is good at lots of things. Why isn't this person talking? Just, uh, don't worry about it. Mr. Hertz took his first company public when he was 22 years old. Uh, 21 and three quarters. I was worth a billion five by the time I was 25. I'm trying to save the world, for fuck's sake, man, if it'll let me. Yvonne was helping the IAA, the government. Helping the government? I was trying to be the government. My work with artificial intelligence. Thinking only better. That's my slogan, by the way. I was trying to guide the government through a security and ethics nightmare it had stumbled into when whoosh, I'm told, no thanks. It's a fucking joke, but I'm not laughing. Uh, Avon is worried that someone's trying to start a war. I'm not worried about it. I'm certain of it. The only problem is I just don't know who exactly. And worse, Clifford doesn't know who. Uh, Clifford, that's his supercomputer. Ah. Uh, it's a neural network of supercomputers. Clifford is a problem-solving facility. Say hello, Clifford. You're embarrassing me, Avon. I'm blushing. Give Clifford data and no more problem. Clifford was on to something, but now the data is gone. Gone? It has to be the Russians. Or the North Koreans. Or the Iranians. Or the Chinese using a proxy agent. The fact is, if we cannot figure out who is behind these data breaches, then Clifford is useless. If we can get paid, of course we can help. There are three data thefts I need you to unbreach, rebreach, broach. I'm a natural communicator. I'm a. Uh... Hey, you're getting off topic. No, this is the topic. How I've been treated, how I've been mistreated. It's an American tragedy. Kill the clever genius so that numbskulls could take cheap bribes. Yeah, I'll pay. I'll pay whatever it takes. We'll uh, need serious cash, six figures minimum. No problem. My share price is through the roof. Look, three problems, three easy enough solutions. Could you stop talking like you're giving a keynote speech, please? Do I do that? Yes. Three data thefts, 250 trillion data points in enemy hands. Three simple solutions, one, Data courier, murdered on the streets of Los Santos. Bodies at the morgue. Ah, the morgue. You'll have to steal an ambulance to get in there. Old fashioned, analog, I love it, retro. Problem two, four of these vans are beaming vast amounts of previously secure military data. You'll need cars to track them down. I have a sort of friend who has some cars you can borrow here. Okay, that sounds easy enough. What's the third? The big new server farm in Palomino has been compromised. I'm certain of it. No one believed me, and I have no idea how to prove it. But if someone could get inside... Oh, just give me a minute. I know these uh, stealth helicopters. These things. Huh? <laughs> now, uh, Avon, these all do seem a bit random. Of course they seem random, because you are not a supercomputer. Clifford will solve it for us. Just give us more data about the data so we can data it. All right, well, um, get to work and good luck. Pleasure to meet you. You look nice in that shirt, Avon. I like your hair. Thank you. Progkillclifford.exe. Avon and his neural network of supercomputers, known as Clifford, would claim to have knowledge of an imminent threat to global security through their research. According to them, an unknown actor was threatening the established world order and attempting to get their hands on thermonuclear weapons, and only through overly complicated secret operations could Clifford be fed enough data in order to pinpoint exactly who this threat was. Where are they? Here. Can I get some caffeine here? Vamos, people! You're late. If you worked for me, I'd fire you. We do work for you, and you can't afford to fire us. 
Very clever. We're trying to stop a global crisis, and you're quibbling about employment law. Remind me to explain why you never had a successful startup go ballistic. My god, you are annoying! <laughs> I'm very successful. I can afford to be annoying. Huh. I date. A lot. I'm a millennial. <laughs> you're 38! I'm on the cusp. Don't try to put me in a box. This guy. Bonkers. We have a real problem here. Every time Clifford looks at the data, this is not good. I told you it wasn't good. I undersold it. This is the apocalypse, the doomsday scenario. Since we uncovered the mole, we realized tip of the iceberg doesn't do it justice. Tip of the, tip of the big iceberg. There's Russian and Chinese agents at work all over the city. The president's been informed. The president's been misinformed. You don't understand what I'm saying. Oh, these fucking civil servants. Soul-crushing socialists, the lot of you. People like you hold people like me back. Okay, other than objectivism, what are we doing here? Well, sadly, I think he's right. There's a submarine off the coast. We have to find out what it's doing there. And then blow it up. No! That's exactly what they want. That's the war. Humanity's last stand. Mushroom clouds, fallout. Fifty generations of living in caves before someone reinvents fire. I need your team to get on there. That and find out what happened to the missing agent. This man. Okay. Codename ULP was kidnapped last night. He was looking into data breaches in our department and was on to something. Now he's gone. Possibly dead. He's not dead. I'm sure of that. We're gonna need an Avenger if we're ever gonna get on that submarine. There's one in a hangar at LSIA. They keep keys to the hangar in the noose vans. Well, I'm gonna need riot bands, too. I've got a plan here. Then start a riot and steal one. This cannot be traced back to me. <sighs> I cannot believe I said that. All that fucking ethics training. And you need to get underwater somehow, undetected. Underwater? Undetected? To find out about the security around the submarine before the assault. Okay, okay, I know, I know. Strombergs. These things. Yeah, all right, let me see if I can source a few. Got a couple here that are wrecked. Right here. So you got this? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just a little, uh, world war to prevent. In that case, we don't need to know anymore. Let's go. All of you. Okay, just give me a minute. All right, there. That's everything. Plans there should be pretty obvious. I'll be in touch. Good luck. Guinness, along with one of his many eccentric mercenary allies, in collaboration with Lester, would infiltrate a secret International Affairs Agency facility beneath the satellite relay station as it was being attacked by Meriwether Security, who were apparently hired by this unidentified actor. The team would also successfully breach the facility and rescue both Agent 14 and his boss, Phoenicia Rackman, who would go on to, quite reluctantly, team up with Avon in order to track down whoever was the original cause of all the chaos. Okay. Hood off now. See? I told you they come back. Why do you do that? Hmm, because it makes me feel tingly inside. It's enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. So, Clifford and I analyzed the data. I mean, Clifford analyzed the data, and I analyzed Clifford. Uh, let me give you an example of my sort of thinking. Hey, could you stop it with the keynote thing? Uh, sorry. Can I make a call here? Hello? Who's this? I'm calling you from a top-secret former government facility. I told you, we told you, to return to civilian life, Avon. It was all a setup, shortstop. Shortstop? <laughs> I always wanted to call someone that. Uh, listen, you're going to get us all killed. It's as clear as the very natural-looking hair on my head. What are you talking about? They're not plugs. Don't you see that the fact that they told you to fire me proves beyond all reasonable doubt that you were wrong and this is a conspiracy? Let me give you an analogy. Why are you talking like that? It really annoyed people when you were working on site. I'm a visionary. I see things. Listen, I'm running late to a departmental potluck, so... Fuck your potluck! This is about stopping a fucking war! Not that again. Goodbye, Avon. See you on planet Earth one of these days. Potluck? Of course. Of course, it's, it's now. It's fucking now. Clifford is right, the data is clear, it's right now. 
The entire department is out sharing meatloaf and potato salad so their base can be permanently shut down. We have to do something now. Right, well, we are a bunch of armed felons, and you're breaking all kinds of security clearances and discussing the musings of a badly named computer. No police force in the world is going to believe us. You'll have to go there and stop it right now. I'll pay. I'll pay whatever it takes. It takes a lot. All right, off we go, huh? I'll keep you posted. Come on, let's go. This threat actor would eventually be identified as a rogue Russian special ops unit led by a Russian special agent known as Bogdan. Guinness and his team would rescue another IAA special agent, codenamed ULP, who had been actively investigating Bogdan's unit and eventually discover the unit's mobile base of operations, the Ramias, a top secret submarine actively patrolling the coast around the state. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait, wait, can we calm down for just one minute? For less than one minute! Look, you look very much like you have wrong end of shit. You've got stuck in the stick, you're up creek with battle of crap! Look, look, I, how you say it? I'm here to help! No. That's code name Bogdan! Kill him! No, kill me all you like! But stop! Listen, 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 listen. Sure, I would like to destroy America, control Russia, and destroy fabric of civilization as we know it. But these are all piping dreams. I am here to help solve real problem. And what's the real problem? You! You are real problem! You're doing dirty work for Avon Quartz and his machine, Cliffy. Oh, cigarette. <laughs> Oi, now, listen, think about it. If you let insecure little egomaniac play God, then fake human brain he builds will be brain of insecure little egomaniac. My scientists have studied Clifford. Clifford <laughs> is asshole. Exactly! And him and Quartz want us to kill each other! Hmm. I don't believe a word of it! Well, how do I make this up? How indeed. Well, thank you, Bogdan. Thank you, Mr. Crest. Thank you, silent, psychotic peons. But this, this is where I say arrivederci. No, I mean, uh, get ready. I mean, this is where I'm in charge! Me and Clifford! Go fuck yourselves, losers! Yes, losers! Yes, we're in charge, me and my dad. We're in charge, and this outdated low-tech submarine will self-destruct in 30 seconds. I think you've got to get out of there quickly! Scuba gear by hatch over there! I have secret escape pod! Good luck! However, upon locating Bogdan, the truth would be revealed that they were not in fact the ones responsible for all of the recent breaches, and that the real enemy all along had in fact been Avon and his little pet Clifford. Lester, already thoroughly annoyed by Avon's ego, would eagerly agree to begin working with Bogdan's crew to take down the real enemy. Given the amount of legwork already done in service of Avon's plan though, unscrewing themselves was not going to be easy. Oh, good. You're here. Because if we're going to stop this little bastard and his idiotically named AI neural network from destroying humanity, we're going to need to act fast. Like shit up stick. Yes, exactly. Now that we know this little bastard is going to unleash hell, he is buying customized missile launchers, tanks, and SUVs. We need to intercept these. Oh, you? Where is that IAA agent? Kidnapped. Now he's got two of my agents. Kidnapped? Yes, the little asshole got himself trapped this morning. Where do you find these morons? You're going to have to bring him back for me. Two dead agents, no payday. How is that our business? If there are dead agents, it doesn't matter if you save the Earth from communism. Your check won't cash. Not my rules. 
threats to keep us from killing each other. Okay, 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 okay. Just where was he grabbed? Meriwether's got him. They're going to sell him to Avon or to the highest bidder at the port. Well, then why don't we just buy him back instead? Okay, yeah. But you'll need cash. Maybe I'll put you in touch with our good friends, the FIB. They just had some funding come through. I hate the FIB! Damn Meriwether! Avon was debriefing ULP when he was kicking this off. ULP's in custody, but his secret transmitter is still live. He thinks he can steal one of their choppers to escape if we're able to protect him. Avon has the entire defense infrastructure at his fingertips. We, we would need a, a, a ballistic missile launcher to have half a chance. And I know where to get one. Oh. <laughs> okay. Like it is, you need to stop Clifford from getting hardware it requires to kill everybody. Democracy is problem. People have too many ideas in my day. Ideas, bad. Get to work. I'll be in touch. And expect the worst. He's on to us. Now in a race to literally save the world from Armageddon at the hands of a whiny, egotistical tech nerd, Lester would help Guinness's team to first save both Agent 14 and ULP again, and escort them to a safe house in Sandy Shores in order to ensure they would all still get paid. Avon and Clifford, now aided by a seemingly infinite army of possibly clone mercenaries, would vanish from the public eye while continuing to move towards their goal of launching a literal nuke and triggering a thermonuclear war between world powers. However, Avon would underestimate Lester's ability to track him down and eventually he would locate their base of operations inside a long-abandoned nuclear missile silo inside Mount Chiliad. Guinness and his assistant, an unidentified man who seemingly never wore a shirt, even under the most serious of circumstances, we speculate a Los Santos native, would personally infiltrate Avon's base inside Mount Chiliad and, against seemingly insurmountable odds, defeat every defense system set up by the techie and his AI pet. Eventually tracking Avon down in the center of the facility and personally chasing him out using prototype jetpacks stored inside. It's unclear who exactly, but one of the two men would then personally kill Avon Hertz, and together they would dismantle the AI neural network known as Clifford shortly after it turned on its creator in a final act of juvenile spite. I hacked into that door. That door is shut. You'll not open that door. You won't! Wait, this door or the one in the back? This person is very annoying. I hope he dies in the nuclear blast, Avon. <laughs> Don't worry, Clifford. Everyone will. Missile protocol initiated. Only seconds to apocalypse. Just a second. This door? You did not hack it. You never even opened it. I could hack it. Prove it. Open it. I can prove it anytime I like. No, Clifford! Voila! <laughs> Your AI is vain and insecure! I wonder where he gets that from. You can't stop progress, you fools! I'm the future of a tidal wave of tsunamis! I cannot be stopped! Clifford cannot be stopped! <laughs> Get in those silly jetpacks and chase that little snot! Thank you, people. Uh, now, when you see the boss, can you let her know that this was all my master plan and uh, I should get a promotion? No, 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 no. We should have let you fry. <laughs> you let me fry? Oh, shut up! Mr. Crest. Mr. Crest, the government owes you a big apology. Oh, and we're also going to expunge all those charges on your record. No, not exactly. Clifford? Oh, Clifford. <laughs> it's going to be like he never existed. He'll probably be turned into call center software or uh, GPS for skateboards. Thank you, all of you. The world, the world owes you a massive favor. Oh, um... Well, we like cash. Understood. <laughs> oh, and uh, those were all innocent mistakes, so let's just make sure the record says that. Thank you. There will be no record. 
Fourteen? Mrs. Rackman? You brought Avon Hertz into the government. Yeah, and these guys. And these guys. If I can, I will fire you. I'm protected class. Yes. Moronic. Now all of you get out of here. Let's all pretend this never happened. Mr. Crest, we'll send you the money. Thank you. <laughs> well, that is just about enough apocalypse excitement for me. And here I was, thinking I could indulge in a little light larceny, you know. I gotta go lie down someplace quiet and think about happy thoughts and simpler times. You know, back when I only had to worry about feeling lonely because girls didn't like me, you know, like, uh, <laughs> even though I hated it at the time, I actually really miss high school. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that, but, but I do. Well, this has been uh, horrifying. Really, really horrifying, but uh, also pretty fun. So, bye bye. By 2019, Lester Crest would be among the most successful criminals in the entire state of San Andreas. Having helped plan and even directly participate in a number of heists over the course of his multi-decade long career, and so, when supposedly contacted directly by Guinness Walker regarding a heist of the then recently unveiled Diamond Casino and Hotel, he would be initially completely uninterested and meet Guinness in Mirror Park with the sole intention of telling him he wasn't going to take the score. I'm here. <laughs> I was just gonna message you back and tell you to dick off. And then I thought, well, why not? Why not go down there and meet him and tell him to dick off IRL? Look, look, whatever you want from me, whatever this big new job is, I'm out, okay? I'm done. I already took every decent score in the state. I cleaned out the Union Depository. I took down the IAA and the FIB. I rang the bell on half the BOSAC 500 CEOs. I have more money than I could ever spend. Okay, so that's it. I always dressed like a retiree. Now, I actually am one. So go ahead, so I can tell you to sh shove it up your hiney. I messaged you. No, 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 no. You messaged me. Who hacked my... We did. In case you don't recognize her, this is Georgina Chang, Vice President of Chang Holdings. Investor, philanthropist, socialite. She was just voted the 89th best-dressed lady in China. Yeah, yeah. Ni hao. I did my undergrad in London, my master's in Vespucci, Mr. Crest. You can speak English. It's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Miss Chang has come to Los Santos to deal with a regrettable incident. Oh, let me guess. The Diamond Casino and Resort? You upset that Thornton Duggan muscled you out? My older brother was in charge. He was taken advantage of. Yeah, well, private equity money's always gonna try to screw you, lady. You wanna talk to a lawyer, not us. You misunderstand. I don't want the casino back. I want them to wish they never heard of it. <laughs> How so? You're going to rob it. <laughs> and why would we do that? Aside from the vault stuffed with cash and different guest consignments every week, there's a challenge. Better security than anything you've ever seen. A truly dynamic and adaptive system. No offense, Miss Chang, but every job I've ever done was impossible. Until I did it. Perhaps. But do you know what? They told me you were the best in the business. <laughs> and it only took me five minutes to clone your cell. Okay. Maybe I'm uh, a little stale. But I'm not coming out of retirement every time some new money sink opens up. I'm gonna need more of a reason. Then maybe you do it for me. Because I'm asking you as a favor. I'm not looking to make any money out of this. Anything you get is all yours. We'll need a base of operations. Find something, but we can't have anything to do with it. Your associate will have to be the front. I'm not gonna pretend I haven't already looked into this job a little bit, you know, a professional curiosity. So I'll send you a mail and it's up to you. Now, if you'll all excuse me, I don't want to miss the early bird special. Bye, then. Yeah. He's just how I thought he'd be. 
I hope you can help us. Huang, let's go. Yes, why not? However, as it turned out, Guinness hadn't been the one to contact Lester, and in fact, their meeting had been a setup by Georgina Cheng of Cheng Family Holdings, the former owners of the casino before it was acquired by the Duggan crime family under less than consensual circumstances. Lester, now a middle-aged, semi-retired expert thief, would find himself immediately attracted to Georgina's own technical know-how. Having successfully hacked both Guinness's and, more impressively, his own cell phone in order to set the meeting up. Likely interested in the heist, then, only because of the chance he would get to keep working with Georgina, Lester would have a dramatic change of heart, and agree to help Guinness plan another major robbery, as well as helping him to set up a main base for planning the heist at an abandoned arcade somewhere in Los Santos. We're ready to roll! You better pull this off. Georgina made a big personal risk making this happen. We won't let her down. All right, let's go for it, people! I'll be calling the shots from Mission Control. The details surrounding the heist of the Diamond Casino Hotel and Resort are, like a great many of the heists that Lester was involved with, completely obscured by black ink. The approach Guinness and his crew took, the identity of the other members in his crew, or even the take they managed to walk away with, are all unknown even to this day. The only thing known with 100% certainty is that, thanks in large part to Lester's master planning, the heist would be a success. Though Lester wouldn't actively participate in the robbery, and instead would take his usual role of guy in the chair, guiding Guinness and his crew through the job. It would be more than enough, though, to impress Georgina, and in the moments immediately following the robbery's success, the two would reportedly share a brief moment of romance atop a skyscraper directly adjacent from the casino. <laughs> ah, you're here, you're here! Come on over to the edge and take a look at her. <laughs> we did it! Cleaned it out! Jackpot! The diamond was unbreakable, and we broke it. <laughs> here, have a swig of that. It is muy bueno. Got some for me. I, uh, I thought you went back. I did, but I'm here now. Didn't want to miss the celebrations. Duggan's insurance premium has already doubled. And it'll keep doubling if we hit the place again. Do you think that's actually possible? Uh, we couldn't approach it the same way. They'll be expecting that, but uh, if we come at it from a new direction... You're a very resourceful man, Mr. Crest. Here I was, thinking that I was retired. Didn't have anything left to give. How about now? How did you hack my cell phone? You're going to have to work harder for that. Now, Lester had been more than open to Guinness and his crew, as well as plenty of other people he wasn't actually obliged to tell about his own social phobias and anxieties, particularly where the opposite sex and courting were concerned. However, it is known that Lester had at least some very brief and exceedingly awkward encounters prior to his return to Los Santos sometime in 2013. Georgina, however, is thought to be the first woman that Lester actively took interest in, and more relevantly, the first woman to actively take an interest in him since his return to Los Santos. Exactly what became of their brief flirtation with romance after the Diamond Casino heist remains entirely unknown, though. We can only speculate that they continued to see each other with some regularity. Turns out, there's someone out there for just about everybody. But the Diamond Casino heist was years ago at time of filming, and exactly what Mr. Crest has been up to since then remains as unknown as the details of his early life. It is known that he remained in contact, at least, with Franklin Clinton, who in 2021 opened up his Celebrity Solutions Agency in collaboration with Guinness Walker, 
and his many criminal contacts. Franklin is known to have mentioned his continued relationship with Lester during that time, but offered no specific details as to what he'd actually been up to since the Diamond Casino. It is once again our speculation that Mr. Crest may have started seeing Mrs. Georgina Chang regularly and perhaps even finally settled down with her. If that was the case though, it remains entirely unclear if she ever discovered his involvement in planning the murder of her father. We imagine that if she did know, she likely would have stopped seeing Lester, or, given her own ambitious nature, may have planned to take revenge on her new lover. However, this is pure speculation, especially given the fact that we know nothing about Georgina's relationship and thus opinions of her late father, who had been dead for at least six years when the two first met in early 2019. Lester Crest is a textbook example of socially awkward. There are any number of reasons and factors which contribute to this aspect of his personality, perhaps chiefly among them being an undiagnosed neurodivergent mind, given his incredible skills with just about any kind of electronic technology. On many occasions, he demonstrated his ability to function completely normally, and more so, effectively, when dealing with people online, over the phone, or in just about any context which allowed him a level of control over the situation, being able to hang up, disconnect, or what have you. When meeting people IRL, however, Lester was exceedingly awkward and would quite frequently make jokes that seemed to make people around him quite uncomfortable. He certainly still demonstrated these personality traits when separated through a phone or computer, but when actually dealing with people physically present, he always seemed to be about five times more socially awkward. Something he was very much aware of, it seems, and which likely only exacerbated these tendencies. There were certainly some exceptions to this, though. Lester seemed to become good friends with Franklin Clinton, and like anybody, became far more capable of actually being comfortable around people that he knew for an extended period of time. This was also true, it seems, to an extent, of Michael DeSanta slash Townley, but with Michael, he seemed to still show a considerable degree of uneasiness, something he seemed to completely lose when dealing with Franklin perhaps because of his intimate knowledge of Michael's less than trustworthy nature. He also seemed to be quite comfortable around Georgina Cheng, perhaps because of their natural chemistry and shared interests, despite only knowing each other for a very brief period of time. Though once again, at this point, it's possible they have remained in contact or even started dating following the successful robbery of the Duggan crime family at the Diamond Casino. Lester is, unsurprisingly, one of the most intelligent bank robbers in the history of America. Though not ever the man to open the vaults or do the dirty work, so to speak, his ability to plan robberies and account for dozens or even hundreds of variables in a job was nearly unmatched. He was also an avid follower of world politics, always keeping up to date on the goings-on of the wider world, and perhaps also unsurprisingly was an avid gamer well into his adult years, being a particular fan of the Righteous Slaughter game series at least up until its seventh mainline entry. He was also known to be an avid consumer of strong alcohol, almost certainly to the point of being considered an outright alcoholic, given that he apparently brewed his own moonshine and given his isolated daily life, drank alone quite frequently. Not frequently enough to be perpetually inebriated, but definitely frequently enough to own his own brewing equipment, which he used with some regularity. Despite eventually finding at least one partner willing to look past his many less than desirable traits, it's entirely unclear if he was ever completely honest with her or anyone about the extent of his online interactions, many of which were, shall we say, less than respectable and often involved non-consensual voyeurism, putting it as lightly as we possibly can.
Lester's criminal career spanned several decades. It's entirely unclear when his earliest infractions would have been, but given that almost all of his crimes are exclusively in the realm of technology, it was almost certainly at a very young age. As a result, it is exceedingly difficult to get a true scope of the crimes committed by America's most notorious hacker. Nonetheless, we here at A Criminal History have attempted to compile a short list of his most egregious crimes over the years, keeping in mind that there will most certainly be plenty of things that we miss. His first truly horrifying crimes began with his involvement in the heist crew that he formed with Michael Townley and Trevor Phillips in the Midwest. Unfortunately, the details of their work together are completely unknown. However, it is known that he helped Michael plan just about every job the man ever took once they started working together, meaning any crimes Michael could be accused of during that time, Lester would at the very least be an accessory to. He was responsible for commissioning an untold number of crimes committed by Guinness Walker and his criminal associates in 2012 and 13, and is thus an accessory to all of them, such as the robbery of a Fleesa bank in North Chumash and the robbery of a Pacific Standard branch on Vinewood Boulevard. He was directly responsible for helping Guinness to establish and run numerous illicit businesses connected to Walker's Motorcycle Club. He was responsible for planning the murder of Life Invader CEO Jay Norris live on television, likely traumatizing many thousands of people who witnessed the man's head explode right in front of their eyes. He helped to plan Michael DeSanta and Franklin Clinton's robbery of the Vangelico jewelry store. He paid for and hired Franklin Clinton to assassinate numerous people, at least nine, during the summer of 2013 and almost certainly was partially responsible for the death of many more killed by Clinton while carrying out those killings. He helped Michael, Trevor, and Franklin to plan the robbery of a county bank in Polito Bay. He planned the robbery of the FIB's headquarters building in downtown Los Santos. He was also reportedly complicit to some degree in the massacre at the court center that year, which both Michael DeSanta and Trevor Phillips are confirmed to have been involved in. And perhaps most famously, he was directly responsible for planning the infamous heist on the Union Depository in downtown Los Santos, and at least according to some reports, may have even actively participated in the robbery, doing one of the most reckless things in his entire life when he fired multiple rocket-propelled grenade rounds out of a moving helicopter high above Los Santos and Blaine counties. He helped Michael, Trevor, and Franklin plan the assassinations of dozens of FIB agents and Meriwether security foot soldiers when setting them up for an ambush at a foundry in East Los Santos. And he helped to plan the assassinations of Harold Stretch Joseph, Steve Haynes of the FIB, Wei Cheng, the father of his future lover, and Devin Weston. He was responsible for the deaths of numerous people during his involvement with Guinness and his crew while working against, though initially for, the insane tech billionaire Avon Hertz. Though it is worth mentioning that seemingly all of these crimes specifically were expunged by the high-ranking IAA operative Venetia Rackman, and thus would likely never appear in his criminal record. And finally, he was responsible for directly planning and helping to execute via data analysis, the robbery of the Diamond Casino Hotel and Resort sometime in early 2019. Please remember that this is in no way a comprehensive list of Lester's crimes, but merely scratches the surface. To recount every crime he was likely ever directly involved or indirectly connected to would take all day, but we feel we have made our point quite clear. Though he may not have been very often directly involved in the violence, he was most certainly always complicit in it, and at the very least an accessory to it. Lester Crest is, as we've said, perhaps the most famous or infamous criminal hacker and data analyst that America has ever seen. What leads a socially awkward, physically disabled genius to pursue a life of celebrity crime? We may never know, but given Lester's reputation amongst criminal circles, it is perhaps logical to assume that he sought recognition and approval 
in one of the only ways he knew how, by leaving his criminal mark on a nation he loathed so very much and building himself one of the most respectable reputations amongst America's least respectable enterprises. Lester Crest was many things, a genius, a very awkward man, a good friend to those he trusted, and a complete and utter creep to practically every woman he ever met, but one thing is for certain, he won't soon be forgotten by the likes of criminal historians like myself who continue to stand back in awe and disgust at his many, almost exclusively illegal accomplishments. It is entirely possible that the state of San Andreas has yet to see the last of Mr. Lester Crest, but should he ever choose to re-enter the criminal limelight once again, we can be fairly certain it will be done with a complete lack of dignity and a whole hell of a lot of self-loathing. I hope you've enjoyed this special episode of A Criminal History. I am your new permanent host, The Criminal Historian, and in fact, I'm here to tell you that in reality, I have been the primary writer for this series since its inception, and from now on, I will be its only one. It's still unclear if or when Mr. Guinness Walker will ever be charged for his uncountable number of crimes committed over a decade-long career. But rest assured, if the day ever comes that his criminal career is finally laid to rest, I and my incredible team will be the first ones on the scene to report it. Have yourself a wonderful evening, and I will see you next time. Good night. <laughs>